Today, I'm going for our first run in the Ultra Escalante 2. Sixteen point five nine miles total for the day across two runs this morning. One hundred and forty-two beats per minute on average, and eight minutes thirty-seven seconds per mile on average. I had to split up the two runs. It was a Sunday morning. I went for one run for about eight and a half miles. Came inside for the daily live stream at six o'clock. Then saw that the weather was just so fantastic out still, and the roads were still pretty empty. I think everyone was a little bit sleepy in Chicago on that morning. And so I went out again for another eight miles because I was just having so much fun running in the Ultra Escalante 2 and also just enjoying some beautifully balmy Chicago spring weather. Now, before I get to my thoughts on the Ultra Escalante 2 and how it went for these first, I guess, two runs, if you want to put it that way, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me or is paying me to wear the shoe or to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Ultra Escalante 2. The two big stories about this shoe is that it's a zero drop shoe. That means that there's no heel drop. The amount of foam that there is in the back of the shoe is the same as the amount of foam that there is in the front of the shoe. And the idea is that it's supposed to be a little bit more natural in terms of what your body wants to do and what your body responds to. The other thing about this is that there is a really wide foot shaped toe box. Now that's one of the things that they also talk about a lot in terms of having a natural running style, natural running gait, something that can really complement what your body wants to do naturally is by having this larger foot shaped toe box, which is something that's very different than the trend that's been going on with running shoes these days. These days, everything wants to have kind of a racer fit, be a little bit more snug, keep you locked down and secure in that toe box. This is going the other direction by having a larger foot shaped toe box for room for your toes to splay and to spread out and help you to provide your own sense of stability and strength and push off as you're uh, hitting that gait cycle. So just giving you a lot more room up in here. Wrapping that larger toe box is a knit material which is nice and breathable. Although on the sides, it's not necessarily like a knit material. It's a little bit more thicker of a material, uh, a little bit less breathable, but gives a little bit more structure to the shoe, but overall the fit and comfort of this shoe has been excellent. Lots of room in the toe box for your foot, but also everything else fits just right in terms of lockdown and how it feels over the midfoot and how I felt in the back here. Not too much padding on the back of this shoe, just a minimal amount of padding, but I felt like it was just right for what this shoe is and the kinds of runs that you're gonna be taking this shoe for. The tongue is more of that knit material in here, not a lot of padding in here at all. Uh, so just everything felt pretty streamlined and sleek, uh, which is not something that I thought I'd be saying about this Ultra shoe. Uh, because uh, the main thing that I have in my head when I think about Ultra shoes is kind of like the weirdness of it. Uh, we've got this, what they call foot pod technology on the outsole here. Everything's designed to like just naturally mimic and support your foot. And that extends all the way into the foot pod technology on the bottom where they've placed the rubber here and cut grooves into the foam that are supposed to mimic some of the ways that your body and your foot naturally move. And I think they've kind of, I want to let Ultra be Ultra and like do its thing, but I just feel like you're going over the top by actually making it look like there's like toes back here. But I think the main part of the story is how did I feel as someone that normally runs in eight millimeter heel drop shoes, 10 millimeter heel drop shoes, 
transitioning to a zero millimeter heel drop shoe. And I didn't really have a problem with it. I've run into comments from other shoes that I've tested that I didn't like so much that were like four millimeter heel drop shoes that people said it's because I'm not used to the heel drop and that it's something that takes weeks, if not months, hundreds of miles to get accustomed to. So I've never really believed put that or put much credence into it. Um, but I was a little bit concerned uh, when I put this shoe on, but uh, I thought it was relatively easy to get used to. It didn't feel that different of a shoe in terms of the heel drop. Uh, it felt a little bit like clumsy of a shoe for the first couple of miles. I felt like I was in running something a little bit different, something that had a wider platform to the bottom. That's really the main thing that I felt. But after the first few miles, about three miles or so, I felt like this shoe and I got into a really nice rhythm and I felt like this was a really great daily trainer. I like the foam, this Ultra Ego foam that Ultra is using. Uh, I felt like it gave me a nice combination of protecting me from impact on the road while also making it sure that the ride feels nice and snappy. I felt like it was a pretty nimble shoe, which is something that I was really surprised by given by how much kind of like shoe there is on the bottom. It kind of looks like a big paddle to me, but uh, I felt like uh, it was really able to stay with me and kind of run wherever I wanted to run and how I wanted to run. Some slower paces, a little bit of faster paces, nothing too fast for today, just an easy run, some easy miles on a Sunday morning, but I felt like the shoe kind of just disappeared uh, and I was just having a great time running, which is what you want for your easy day, daily trainer type of shoe. I think part of what helps with that is two things. It's a zero drop shoe, but it's not a minimalist shoe. So there's not zero stack height. It's not just like a bare strip of rubber to protect you from the road and temperatures. There's 24 millimeters of stack height on the shoe, which it sounds like a lot more than it felt like underfoot. I was a little bit surprised by that number, but it also was a pretty comfortable shoe to run in, in terms of uh, protecting me or insulating me from you know, pebbles, rocks, stones, cracks, that kind of thing. Uh, some of the harsher parts of the elements that I was feeling out there. The other thing that is uh, in here that I didn't expect and that I don't think people have really talked about is that there's a little bit of a rocker sensation to the front of the shoe. And so something that I've seen in a lot of Hoka shoes, or I think they were the first shoes to really start incorporating that, but we see it now in a lot of Nike shoes as well, like the Zoom Fly and the Vapor Fly, is there's a rocker or a bit of a, like a step off in sensation. So I, I equate it to like if I were at the edge of a, a curb and I stepped on the edge of it and then I were to like keep stepping forward, what would that feel like? What would that rock sensate, rocking sensation feel like? I feel that here too. And what that does is it's like they've shaved off like the front of the shoe or they curved it forward. And so as your foot hits, as it goes through the gait cycle, this the back part of your foot tends to lift up a little bit faster because of that rocking sensation. It helps you just pick up your foot a little bit faster, get through the gait cycle a little bit quicker. And that was pleasant. It was a mild rocker sensation, uh, a little bit later or to more towards the forefoot than in other shoes that I've run in, but um, very pleasant and I was glad to have it. And it made for uh, an easy transition to a zero heel drop shoe for me. This is something that I think is gonna get inserted into the daily trainer rotation pretty easily for me. Um, I thought that the shoe and I had a great time together. I didn't really have any problems with it at all. I think in this black and white version, it's nice and understated, so I think it looks great. The outsole, I've already mentioned what I don't like about the outsole pattern, but you know I don't get to see the outsole pattern when I'm running, so it doesn't really bother me all that much. I think the shoe actually looks pretty nice. I do like this little stripe, stripe that they have down the tongue uh, that covers up some of the, the lacing. Uh, I think it's mostly decorative rather than it is being really all that functional. It says Escalante up front. I think it looks really nice, but it did make it harder for me to put my stride foot pod on here. I just couldn't, I had a hard time figuring out a way to weave that in on top of the laces because where this stripe is, that's usually where the foot pod goes. So I had a little bit of difficulty there. The only other real thing that I noticed from the transition to the zero drop was that uh, the following morning, uh, my calves were a little bit tight. So obviously I was being worked in a little bit of a different way than I normally am since I was running in a zero drop shoe. It wasn't like I didn't notice it at all. It did feel it the following day. A little bit of pleasant tightness in the calves feeling like I'd, oh, okay. I worked out something different, a little different part of the leg. And um, so something that I noticed, but it wasn't painful, it didn't hurt. Um, I didn't run in the same shoe the following day just because I was testing other shoes. Uh, but it's something that I can easily see myself reaching for uh, multiple days throughout the week. I 
really like this shoe. It's fun to run it. Um, so um, a surprise for me, I thought that I was gonna have to really fight to try and figure out, okay, maybe I don't really like zero drop, but for people that do, is this a good shoe? I was trying to be fair to it that way. But I don't think I don't have to kind of do any of that kind of mental gymnastics for it. I just like the shoe. It's comfortable to run in. The foam is nice. The rocker is nice. Um, it's a great daily trainer. So if zero drop shoes or something that you've been interested, now is a good time. I think this shoe just got discounted on the Ultra website. So it's just a little bit over a hundred bucks right now. And I think that's a pretty good value uh, and making it for an interesting time to try it out. I believe there's a 2.5 that's either out or coming out soon from this shoe, which is why that shoe might be discounted now. So uh, maybe you might want to wait for it, but this Ultra Escalante 2, I think, is a pretty interesting shoe. I look forward to getting more miles into it and I'll update you once I hit 100 miles in the shoe, which hopefully will be pretty soon. So hit the subscribe button so you can be notified for when that video hits. If you wanna talk in the meantime any more about this shoe, feel free to put your questions or comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you guys stay safe on your runs out there and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?